Hey, everyone, and welcome to UFC Connected. I'm Megan O'Leary, and here's what's coming up on today's show. Coming up on today's show, Tyson Pedro reveals how his father's unconventional parenting made him the man he is today. Pedro! I definitely wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for him. Vanessa Demopoulos tells us how performing under the spotlight prepared her for the bright lights of the octagon. I love the crowds. I love the stage. I love you guys. And I'm honored to be able to share that with people. And Jim Miller picks the top five fights from his record-breaking career. I'm a big fan of Jim Miller. That kid's a savage. He is gritty as they come. When Tyson Pedro told his father he wanted to be a pro fighter, his dad had an unexpected response. Fight me. His father, John, was an MMA promoter and former hard man himself, and he wanted to make sure his son was truly ready to embrace the fight lifestyle. John has remained in the light heavyweight's corner ever since, and the two really embody the father-son bond. So in this edition of Unbreakable, we learn more about their shared love of combat sports. I attribute a lot of what I have today to my dad. A lot of our avid fans know the book on Tyson Pedro. His father, John, owned King of the Cage in Australia. So fighting was literally the first thing that Tyson Pedro learned. Becoming a father, Tyson changed everything. He was perfect to me. I didn't know something could be so powerful and could become anything he wants to become. Tyson Pedro! I definitely wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for him. My dad, he's a character <laughs> that's lived many lives. He grew up very hard, like in the gang life. He's definitely a hard man because of his, um, yeah, his childhood. <laughs> I'm from California. I grew up in the gang culture. You know, I'm not gonna justify or make anything sound pretty, but I did what I had to do. Those days in the gangs, you had to fight. My whole background is fighting and being the best martial artist I could. Done six black belts. I was fighting all my life, and so I became something I didn't want to be, but I survived. I wanted to take Tyson's mother out of that area. We come to Australia and thought, we'll give it a go. That's where we had Tyson. He came out, he had the same score on his head that Mike Tyson had. I was already a massive fan of Mike Tyson. And when I looked at him and he came out with a frown and he had his hands like that, I went, Tyson. When I was teaching and I had schools, he was always my right hand man. You could see already, he was learning everything faster, quicker. He loved being there and he loved being the best. I was 10 times tougher on him than I was on anybody else. And I'd make him stay back after everyone went home. He did 10 times more push-ups, 10 times more sit-ups. Let's go, come on, come on, push it up. One more. I think in his mind, he was raising warriors and Spartans or whatever he was doing, but uh, it was just a very hard, uh, um, hard on us kids. I can't remember when that kid ever actually complained to me. He was ready to follow me into the end of the earth. And if I jumped, he was jumping. There was massive pressure because I was always John Pedro's son. Everyone always expected me to be good. There was an organization called King of the Cage. Myself and my business partner, Tony Bonello, we decided to get King of the Cage up in Rome to expand mixed martial arts in Australia. Tyson growing up with King of the Cage, I thought he, he was a part of it. Imagine these guys coming to do training camps. Tyson was in there, he was on the mat. So while kids were playing with their dolls or kicking a soccer ball around, Tyson was learning how to do a flying arm bar or triangle. And this was normal for him. So he doesn't know anything different. I got into boxing at Blacktown Hit Squad and my hands started getting pretty good. I was thinking, oh, I want to try for the Olympic team. I started skipping school to go train and box full time. At that stage, he didn't want me fighting. Him being one of the like promoters at the time, he knew there was no money in it. I knew 
There's nothing but pain going down this road. I thought I messed up. He was just a young fella, and I knew he wanted to leave school and fight. And I knew that was going to be tough. So I basically wanted to break him. So I said, you got to spar me. And if you can spar me the full five minutes, you fight. I hit him and knocked out his teeth. And he was laying there, and he was out. There was like an overhand right, and my eyes glossed over and just looked at me, and I was just like, oh, All the boys want to jump in. They're all like, bro, this is no telling. This is the fight world. This is what you want to be. You got to find out now. Don't find out in the ring. You don't want to be here. So he got up, his teeth are out, he's done. And I said, where are you going? You got 10 seconds left. I was crying, full ball of my eyes out. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit traumatizing as a kid, but <laughs> that afterwards, he, um, I remember he took me out of the back and he was like, all right, now I'll, I'll let you fight. Like, I see that you made it. And I was like, that was bull just felt bad, he knocked me out. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I knew he was going to be great. I've been training for 27 years. Even though I still had lots of holes in my game, I knew that I could hold my own. I'd only had four fights, but they were all first round finishes. Tyson wow. Pedro, very, very impressive. And then someone called me and goes, hey man, do you want to fight in four weeks? I was like, yeah, sweet. And he was like, in the UFC. And I was like, hell yeah. The phone starts ringing. Tyson's on there and he goes, Dan, I did it, Dan. And I said, like, what do you do? And he goes, I'm in the UFC. I went, you're kidding me. You're in the largest, best fighting organization in the world? You're there? Did I think he was ready for the UFC? Yeah, 100%. He's dangerous. Tyson Pedro, 4-0, makes the walk to the octagon for the first time. Taking on Khalil Roundtree Jr. Roundtree's got the UFC experience. He's been here right. a few times before. Oh! Huge knockdown. left hand. Takedown for Tyson Pedro. Good recovery from that knockdown. This is bad news for Roundtree. Get it. Get it. That's a terrible position. Oh, and he gets the tap. Wow! Tyson Pedro lighting him up here in Melbourne. I think that was one of the first times he's said, like, I'm actually proud of you. I don't have dad in my corner at all to help with the fights or training. He's there because I want my ride or die in my corner. Fighting's part of us. Like, we're not out there stressed or anything. Like, we're calm because we've been doing this for years. Don't sir. Yeah, it's getting twice. He's got Craig in a terrible position oh, here. That's, that's it, that's it. And that is it, oh. Tyson Pedro, two for two. We have moments and sometimes we don't even say anything. We have like a connection that we sort of understand each other. He knows when I'm switching on and then he has to switch on. This is bad, he might get it. That's, that's it. it, yes he did. Tyson Pedro by submission. This is a credentialed light heavyweight who a lot of people think eventually is going to work his way to the shot at the title. The Shogun fight. This is easily the most memorable moment for me. This is his big opportunity. With his dad in his corner, he could get the biggest win of his young career. Everything just felt right. A good knee to the midsection. And then my knee had fully ruptured. As soon as I heard it snap, how loud it was, I just knew what was that? That's He's... absolutely a knee injury. All I was thinking about was I can't quit because my dad will give me a hiding out the back. <laughs> if I quit the fight, he'll bash me. <laughs> I ended up carrying on. I'm not sure exactly what caused that, but we saw him collapse. So he comes to the corner and I went, to your knee. You sit down? Good. That's all right, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Good. And he's already shut it off. He goes, nah, let me fight. Listen, the time flies if you be in it, you're in it, win it, yeah? I knew this could cause more damage, but I also know this kid won't go out like that. He needed to be the boss and make the call. In hindsight, maybe I should have called it, but as fighters, you go, man, I can fight with one leg. <laughs> Shogun is looking to punch his way to victory. Stop, 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 stop. Unfortunate for Tyson Pedro, who is presented with a big opportunity tonight. Obviously, I've had a lot of injuries, but yeah, I knew it was bad. 
I had to make the choice to start from scratch and use the patella for my ACL. Yeah, that was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made because I knew that that was going to be almost four years. That hit me hard. Fighting is like what gives me peace of mind. Not having that break, your mind just going non-stop and then you're sitting in bed, like, you can't walk. That was pretty <laughs> Outside family saying, hey, you got to retire. That's when it started becoming hard. There was times where I was like, can I do this for sure? But in my mind, I knew I was always going to be back fighting. I was flying from New Zealand. He opened the door. When I stood there and he looked at me, he just grabbed me and held me and hold me for 20 minutes and just crying. I said, you ready to do this? And he looked me up and said, yes. And then I knew, we're back. That time really given me a lot more purpose to my fighting. I've gotten so much stronger as a person because I've just proved myself that you can do anything you put your mind to. If you work hard at doing what you love, anything's possible. Welcome back, Tyson Pedro. His last fight, three and a half years ago at this point. So I asked Tyson about that. I said, hey, how did you feel? Were you nervous? People were asking, questioning, is this what you want to do? Do you want to fight? My answer to all of them was, do you even know this kid? That's all he wants to do is fight. Tyson Pedro! Time to knock the rust off after not competing. Oh, and, oh, oh heavy shot. Oh. Might end it. Tyson Pedro is back in a big way. After that fight, when I came back, I was like emotional because I proved everyone wrong that told me to quit. He bore all that pain and suffering that he had, and it all came out that night. And then the second fight. The Hansucker one was amazing. Here is Tyson Pedro. He's got a capacity crowd to perform in front of tonight. You see his father, John Pedro, in the corner. I could see how proud Dad was to show, hey, this is my son, and he's fighting, and you're all coming to watch. Tyson Pedro! Yeah, it's a hunch. It's a punch! Oh, he heard him. Yeah, he did. Front and kick front to the, kick body. To the body. That's it. That's it. Tyson Pedro, have a night! Wow. 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 Jumped on me and tackled me, but it was just in the moment. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Dad used to teach me that the core of martial arts is to go every day and to try and get better at a move, right? If that's the core thing, by definition, you're trying to be better as a person every day. I want to be remembered by the people that I love as a good man. I got that from my dad. I like to think I did something good. I didn't come from a good place. But I think I did something good that made him a good man. I don't do a lot of kids and people and I was able to contribute some way. As a father, watching your son live his dream and live in it with him, we got here. We got here. We started this journey together. And I promise you, we're gonna end this journey together. Some UFC fans see the octagon for the first time on a friend's TV or at a sports bar. But for strawweight Vanessa Demopoulos, that introduction came at a strip club. While working as an exotic dancer, Demopoulos went to MMA training at the suggestion of a co-worker, and she instantly fell in love. Swapping the stage for the gym, Vanessa set her sights on making it to the UFC. After an impressive run on the regional scene, she reached that goal in 2021, and now Lil Monster shares her story in this edition of Origins. Little monster, Vanessa Demopoulos. She is a fighter at her core. She says the mixed martial arts pays her soul. I am a performer in every sense of the word. 
She's tough. She's durable. She's experienced those highs and those lows. Her attitude about fighting and competing is very strong. I love the crowds. I love the stage. I love you guys. And I'm honored to be able to share that with people, to be able to dance in front of people, to be able to fight in front of people. She tapped Vanessa Demopoulos. Amazing. Gets it done. Amazing. I'm definitely born to be an entertainer. My whole life has been that. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Mom and dad were in the entertainment industry my whole life growing up. My mom was a dancer and my dad was a DJ. It was kind of a lot of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Being raised by two people that were all about that life wasn't necessarily ideal. My grandparents ended up getting custody of us. They took us back to Greece, which was their homeland. My childhood in Greece was very simple. Very humble, small town vibes for sure. I moved back to the United States when I was like nine years old. Having to learn English all over again was really hard. I got bullied a lot. I was an angry kid. I got suspended from four schools in one calendar year. I was so unruly in the household. I ended up getting kicked out of the house that we were living in and had to live out of my car. I found myself just caught up with a lot of things that I definitely shouldn't have been, uh, drugs being on that list. I felt really lost. A bunch of friends of mine, we had gone to a strip club. At the time, I was working in a factory, and I had like two weeks worth of my paycheck that a girl just ended up taking away from me in several minutes of time. And I was like, oh my goodness, like she just took two weeks of my pay and in like less than 10 minutes, I was like, what am I doing? Like this looks like a super fun job. I get to do pole dancing and I get to have fun and smile and make money doing it. And it was something I was very comfortable with because I knew it was the industry my parents had come from. I started to dance at the clubs. Dancing really like helped me feel a lot of empowerment. I got to get a lot of that energy that I had out, but it also provided me financial security. You know, get to support myself and not have to worry so much about like where I was gonna get food from. Pole dancing saved me in a lot of ways. And it like scared me sober. I started taking things a lot more professionally and living my life the way I wanted to. It was a stepping stone versus a gravestone for me. There was a manager at the club at the time. He saw my skills on the pole and he was like, you know, if you put that same effort that you put in the pole dancing into something like fighting, you might be able to do something. I was like, all right, cool, man, teach me how to fight. I remember the first time I ever stepped into the gym to do a Muay Thai class. It was like literally the hardest thing I had ever done. I threw up, I almost passed out about four times. But the way fighting made me feel, it was the only thing I ever wanted to do. I definitely knew that I wasn't gonna quit. Let's go. For me, dancing and fighting are very similar. You have to have very good spatial awareness, flexibility, dexterity, and that translates beautifully into jujitsu. Looks like Demopolis is considering going for an arm bar here. Got it. Straight up. That's Ow. it. Wow. Demopolis. That was incredibly impressive. Got to incorporate a lot of the pole dancing moves into jujitsu. Demopolis gets the submission. Well, what a personality Vanessa Demopolis is. She said pole dancing is her everything. It's what got her into fighting. LFA was freaking. Awesome. Every fight was tough. 
Demopolis really has taken her fight game up a level. It was a perfect breeding ground for a UFC fighter. Demopolis has her in a very dangerous submission yeah. attempt. Oh. And she's out! She's over! Oh. Oh. That UFC was my goal. Like, I was making the run. Like I said, the scripts were flipped. The grappler knocked out the striker. Vanessa Demopoulos ready to get inside the octagon tonight for the UFC debut. My UFC debut was on a one week's notice, up a weight class against a veteran in JJ Eldridge. But I was ready for the challenge. Demopolis has boasted that she has no fear. Once the door closes, there's nothing that's going to happen to her that she's not able to take. Yeah, wow. She was a much more seasoned opponent than myself, much more skilled than I was ready for. Demopolis, you know, she's game. She's got the fire. She's got the fighting spirit. But JJ's just too technical here tonight. Winner by unanimous decision, JJ. Trash. At this time, I was still dancing, basically running on fumes all the time. I would be dancing three, four nights on the weekends and then training three to four times a day. It was pretty exhausting. I remember being in the fighter hotel. I would look out of my window and it was staring at the hustler club that I was working at. I couldn't believe that I lived these two very contrast lifestyles. I was getting ready for my next UFC fight. I was deep into fight camp. I was putting my makeup on to get ready for work. And I was just looking at myself in the mirror and I'm just like, I just don't have the energy. I didn't have the energy to be able to go out there and be entertaining and be this awesome gymnast on the pole for eight hours. I just didn't have it. I didn't have the juice. OK, let's go. Her dancing is a full-time job. I said, hey, you've got to stop, because if you want to be committed, you've got to go all in. I was like, do I want to keep splitting my time and efforts? Or do I actually believe in myself that I am good enough to be a UFC athlete, to really make it in this game, and to be a full-time fighter like I dreamed of? I didn't have the means to quit, but I did. I walked away from the industry and never looked back. Second UFC appearance for Vanessa Demopoulos. And man, does she enjoy this job. She is a fighter at her core. I put all my efforts into the training camp for UFC 270. And there was a lot on the line for me, having walked away from my job. If I'm Demopoulos, I'm going forward, cutting angles, trying to set traps to get her skirt along the side of the octagon. Oh! He hit me with an overhand that was so clean. Massive right from Gomez Suarez! Huge shot! I was doing jiu-jitsu on autopilot. She might set up an yeah. armbar here. It looks like she's going to get an armbar. She's looking to oh, hook this and sweep. Worse. That's this it right worse. there. Oh, my she God. It. She got it. What a rally, Vanessa yeah. Demopoulos! Wow. Amazing. Gets it done! Amazing. After getting dropped by that big right hand, what composure, what warrior spirit. That ended up winning me a bonus in the UFC, and I was able to just change my entire life from that moment moving forward. Congratulations. No! Oh my God, it's Joe Rosen! All of a sudden! Congrats. All your hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, Vanessa Demopoulos! No one's had a path as hard as the UFC. Came through the school of hard knocks. She was very aggressive as a child, always getting in fights. I don't care what adversity anybody is currently experiencing. You can create a larger story from that. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be anything. I was just a fuck up and somebody who didn't accomplish anything. But it didn't matter what it took, I was going to make it happen. Oh! Huge shot from Demopolis. I created greatness from that story. Oh, 
huge elbow. Now I get to be in an arena fighting in front of millions of people. What a rally, Vanessa Demopoulos! I believed in me until other people did. Every time Jim Miller steps into the octagon, he's making history. The New Jersey native currently owns the records for the most fights and the most wins in the UFC. This tough-nosed, soft-spoken fighter amassed a reel of highlights over more than 15 years. We tasked Miller with looking back over his impressive body of work to choose five of his all-time favorite bouts. I was born to be a fighter. I was made to do this. I was made to be in this type of rough and tumble life. I'm a big fan of Jim Miller. That kid's a savage. He is gritty as they come. I've been able to hang around for about 14 years now thus far and make the walk to the octagon so many times. When I look back on my UFC career and I look at how many times I fought and all the opponents that I've fought, it makes me proud to have gotten this far and to have been able to hang on this long. 40 fights into his UFC career, still getting it done. It's definitely cool to have been a part of so many great events and so many great fights. My God, what a fight. I'm Jim Miller, and these are my top five fights. Coming in at number five is my fight with Kamal Shalarus at UFC 128. That was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. On that day, my brother Dan and I were both on the main card. Dan and his brother are a couple of savages, the fabulous fighting Miller brothers. The day that we fought would have been my late niece's second birthday, and seeing my brother fight with a broken heart and lose. Nate, the great All I wanted to do was give him a hug, and uh, it's time for me to walk. He is as game as they come, just like his brother Dan will fight anyone. I had to push it down and go out and fight. Honestly, I think it was one of my best performances I've ever had. Nice uppercut. Charlie was maybe hurt. And I finished my opponent. It is all over! And I feel like I did so as quickly as I could so that I could go back and I could hug my brother. It's something that I'm never going to forget. Coming in at number four is my first fight with Charles Oliveira. That was at UFC 124. I was a little bit pumped up going into that fight because there was a lot of talk and a lot of buzz around Charles. His jiu-jitsu is top of the food chain. And everybody was telling me, how are you gonna deal with his jiu-jitsu? And I remember thinking like, I'm a black belt. <laughs> I had this feeling like when I grabbed a hold of him, I was gonna overwhelm him with my strength. Here we go. I went out there and I knew he was gonna be aggressive. I knew he was gonna come at me. Got into a little bit of striking with him, pressed him, took him down. And Miller's looking to take him down now. And I knew he was going to be dangerous off the ground. Miller's got to be very careful. Oliveira attacking from his back. He threw up some attacks. I was able to fend them off pretty easily. And I saw the opportunity to swing for his leg and just attack and was able to secure the knee bar and get the submission. Alexander's all over! He's standing! Wow! That is a huge feather in Jim Miller's cap. Coming in at number three was my fight with Fabricio Camoz at UFC 168. Early in my career, I fought very intensely. As I've been able to kind of control that intensity throughout the years, the calmer I am, the more dangerous I am. I came out of the fight with Fabricio and, you know, I was calm and was kind of feeling him out. We got into a little striking exchange. They battle in the middle of the octagon. And he ended up taking me down. Camoz takes him down. He swung with his left hand. When he did, he opened his hips up. So I swung for the arm bar and curled my heels to my butt, and he stood up, and I was able to hook his ankle with my right arm. It didn't take very long for me to be able to extend my hips and get the submission. He got it! Him. It is all wow. over! I was able to go out and pretty quickly into the first round submit a third-degree black belt. Arm bar finish, Jim Miller. Coming in number two is my UFC debut at UFC 89 against David Barron. It was the first time that I ever fought outside of the state of New Jersey. I ended up fighting in England against a guy who was actually ranked in the top five in the world at welterweight. He was a very conditioned athlete, very tough guy. I just knew I had to overwhelm him with my pace and my pressure, and I just pressed hard from the get-go. 
Real good pressure from the top by Miller. And was able to win a lot of the striking exchanges, use my wrestling to take him down and dominate the ground game as well. He's real confident with his top game. I felt him start to slow down a little bit and was able to take his back, got my arm under his chin and was able to secure the rear naked choke. That's deep, that's it. It is all over! I was able to get a submission of the night bonus in my UFC debut, which was extremely impactful on my life and my career. That fight definitely set me up to compete with the best in the world. My number one pick is my first fight with Joe Lozon at UFC 155. And I was fighting a guy that I'd been super friendly with, you know, since the beginning and finally had the opportunity to share the octagon with him. And we went out and put it all out there. I knew that he was gonna come at me hard for the entire 15 minutes. Flows on forever game, keeps pressing forward. There's no quitting him, and he definitely proved it. You can't question the heart of Joe Lozon. The first round of that fight, I kind of dumped everything into it. I ended up landing an elbow, and once that first one landed, it was just game on to just keep throwing them. He's going with the elbow now. And I remember hitting him and him opening up. Huge cut on the grill of Joe Lozon. My game plan originally was not to take it to the ground. And then in the second round, I was exhausted. So I ended up, out of instinct, shooting and taking him down. And I was trying to pass him out so that I could set up a submission. In the process, he ended up bumping up into me, and I kind of fell back to try to get a choke. And it potentially cost me a round on the judge's card. Strong close to round two for Joe Lozon. During the minute break in between rounds, I can still hear the crowd. The crowd certainly appreciating the effort here of both men. With short time left on the clock, I knew how tired he was, so I would press forward, and me stomping forward, exhausted, he threw up the heel hook. Joe Lozon dropping down for a heel hook. I was able to shrink my knee pretty quickly, and it wasn't too much of a danger, and then as we scrambled up together, he wrapped up my neck, and with how sweaty and bloody we were and exhausted. It wasn't really close at all. Wrote out the position and didn't want to get myself any deeper. What a fight. I remember standing up after the fight, hearing the roar of the crowd. That got a standing ovation from the crowd here. That was a special fight. We both put on a gritty performance. Felt really amazing to be a part of that. The appreciation that we got from the fans that night was amazing. That's one of the fights that I feel that should definitely end up in the Hall of Fame. That was just an absolutely fantastic fight. I'm Jim Miller, and those are my top five fights. Well, that's all for this episode, but we will see you next time right here on UFC Connected. Thanks for watching.